Hello and welcome to Travel Talk. I'm Mary Pat Sullivan, here today with some of our thought and editorial leaders from throughout the North Star Travel Group. Joined right now by Mitra here and Jeff joining us on the line from his offices in Chicago, launching hotel investment today. So Jeff, let's talk a little bit about the hotel segment. It's all about the money, right? So can you talk a little bit about key travel trends impacting ROI for the hotel and investment space right now? So I think it all depends on the economy to a degree. Uh, if we have a soft landing, a uh, mild recession, which is where the prevailing wisdom seems to be right now, I think the hotel industry will come out of it fine. Uh, there is an ever-increasing feeling that travel is a birthright. Everybody's getting out one way or the other. Uh, business travel will continue to rebound. I saw a story this morning about dissatisfaction with Zoom and the need to meet in person. So what's been missing from the current rebound is business travel. It's back, but it's not back at the level of leisure travel. So if there is a continued desire to meet in groups or one-on-one -on -one and transient business, that bodes well. And even if there's a mild recession, I think it's manageable. The bigger challenge for profit is controlling costs. Um, labor costs are starting to spike up because more full-time employees are coming back. As, as there's more people in-house, there's more need for more full-timers. So how hotels manage to use technology to keep a lid on labor costs is going to be crucial. And everybody seems to be aware of that. But at the same time, if you can't provide service, you're really going to hurt your reputation as an operator and as a brand. So it's a really fine balance. I think here we are a couple years later, and people have made some pretty cool investments in technology. Will it help this challenge? I mean, Amitra, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Where the technology piece in hotels is going here and what's that, what the evolution is. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We definitely continually hear about this increased appetite for innovation, um, increased, increased desire to try to find technologies that will add efficiencies to operations. Um, of course, you know, there are challenges for the hotels, as you mentioned, as far as costs. So it's a bit of a balance there. But I think certainly technologies that relate to artificial intelligence and machine learning that can help with revenue management, that can help with dynamic pricing, that can help with customized offers as travelers are maybe on a, a website, all of those things can add some efficiency. And we're certainly hearing a lot of interest in that to then free up the human staff to really do what they do best. Um, so I, I definitely think that's something we're going to hear more, but certainly th there is this balancing act that is in process as far as wanting to be forward thinking, wanting to innovate, wanting to invest in what's being created out there, but then wanting to watch those costs. What about, Jeff, let's talk about the loyalty piece. For the hotel industry, that's such a big part of what they do, right? And there's been a lot of investments made there as well. What are you seeing now in terms of systems in place for more personalizing that loyalty experience for the customer? What are the hotel industry spending money on there? Now, you've seen the airlines make it a little bit more challenging to get your highest tier, or they're really changing the game a little bit. The hotel industry always seems to follow a, a lot later what the airline industry does. And um, they are, they're doing it with content. I think what the way they're marketing to guests is trying to find out, you know, what's on their mind, what they're looking at. And again, machine learning and AI and understanding what the guest wants and delivering that more personalized experience is where the game is going right now. I, I just have to add on the topic, when I think about loyalty, for me, it is all intertwined with the mobile app, certainly for the big chains. You know, it's all about getting the consumer to download that brand app. Most people aren't sitting in front of their desktop computers, Most, but everybody, if you've got that app, you've got it in your pocket at all times. You're out with friends, wherever you might be, and the conversation turns to travel and they pull the app out and they might be then more likely to book with that brand if they've got that app. And so we hear a lot of talk 
about what can be done to create more stickiness with that app, what can be done to create a better user experience, add more payment options, add incentives, or you know, there's gamification being looked at, anything that can make that app the must-have go-to tool. And then, of course, it ties back to then the loyalty and those direct bookings. And it's not just about using the app for the booking, it's about how can we make that app a key communication channel during the stay. Well, to Jeff's point, because they're looking for beyond what they used to look for in the hotel experience, right? right. They want you to answer the, I need this to happen now, right? They, right. And so that has to kind of come from the app. Sure. It's great to see. And as hiring is so challenging right now, right. you know, that's yet another differentiator. The hotel industry is really struggling with that, right, Jeff, with the hiring challenges right now, the staffing? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, let's face it, working in the on being a line employee in the hotel business is never glamorous, never will be. Um, so they, of course, need to pay more, which they're starting to do. And, you know, that's that changes the whole equation, you know, about what, what makes a profitable hotel. And even when they're doing their pro formas to develop a new hotel, that's something that now comes into play that perhaps never did before. So it's interesting to watch what they're doing there. But of course, it's all, you know, it's all about the culture as well. How, what are you doing to make that place a good place to work? And the other big thing is flexibility. You know, uh, traditional staffing hours or, or shifts are not what they used to be. And even letting people work from home where they can is something they're doing. So, you know, they're pulling out every trick they can you know, to bring back, you know, their FTEs and, and just finding part-time help. And it, and honestly, it starts with better pay. And that's a, you know, a tough thing for them to swallow. Uh, but I don't think there's any way around it right now. Well, and you look at that, Jeff, you're talking about profitability. And if you look at the gross operating profits, the, the, the rates can't stay where, they can't go much higher, right? The, right now, the hotel industry is benefiting right. from a pretty incredible yes. price increase. So how, how is that picture, do uh, you see that laying out throughout 2023? Now you're going to start seeing some resistance, especially if we, you know, if the economy slows down, there's going to be even greater resistance to price increases. So that means finding, again, it goes back to being more efficient as an operator, um, you know, and that's all technology driven for the most part, but there's some operational things uh, as well, hours of operation for the restaurant, a number of restaurants you have open, um, using space alternatively, you're seeing more and more hotels that may have ballrooms that are not being used, that they're, you know, they're turning it into a co-work space or, you know, they're, they're finding alternative uses to be more creative in driving revenue and getting, you know, as much revenue per square foot as they can. And we're certainly hearing about a lot of companies on the tech side that are trying to create solutions that enable the hotels to be monetizing things thing away from the room revenue you know yeah. finding new opportunities to drive revenue whether it's you know selling i i've even heard talk of you know uh, figuring out ways to charge for like a parking space um, if you have a parking lot that's not being used or a fitness room or you know there are creative solutions um, that i think we're going to see really start to come to bear i think if you think about it the nimbleness of our industry here in 2023 is pretty impressive. Yeah. Because trying to think of ways to use that space differently, to open yourself up to the local community, which some of the yes. hotels weren't doing before, yep. it, it kind of gives you a, a safety net if and when we have to go through something else that we now have other ways to work, you know? So Jeff, I'm gonna make this our last question to you, but what about deals? Are we gonna see more deals happening in 2023? What's your perspective on deal making in the hotel investment segment? Um, there's going to be distress probably in the second half of the year as um, some more leveraged owners and players can't refinance at a rate that is manageable, which is going to put a lot more inventory in the market and maybe at a discounted rate um, that others are preparing to swoop in. There are a lot of funds being raised and have been raised and are just waiting 
for this moment. So you're going to see a fair amount of activity, I think, in the second half of this year. Are you going to see, you know, major deals between hotel companies like, uh, you know, the way Marriott bought Starwood a few years ago? Likely not. You never know. Um, but what we're seeing are what we call bolt-on deals. That's a similar situation where there was a group, um, Iberostar, it says, which is a um, mostly an all-inclusive uh, resort concept in Europe. You know, they were acquired, not a big company, but they were acquired by one of the majors. And, you know, an example of a bolt-on deal, uh, there are several others that have happened where the big big boys, they, they can't swallow a major company. Hyatt just brought Dream Hotels uh, a few weeks ago. Another example of an opportunity to expand their inventory, get into markets where they maybe need some penetration. And I think we'll see more deals like that throughout the year where some of the smaller 10, 20, 30 hotel companies might be acquired by, by majors that you know, see an opportunity or, or see a new, new brand extension that they don't have in their portfolio right now. Diversification of the portfolio, right? We're, yep. we're seeing diversification where non-all-inclusive companies want to be in that space and vice versa. So yeah, I think that's great. Well, we'll keep watching, Jeff. We'll keep reading your new publication to learn more and focus where to follow up on the technology. So thanks, Jeff, for being with us today. We, we love having you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.